your night in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let your voice come before the king of kings la dos kabaya dali busaba in the name of Jesus arodan dalakata ezeba tora baza shekata mi bozeraka santa li bokabaya in the name of Jesus there is none like unto you. Rapa Kotalaba, Rebobo Sibran Garibo, Amba Lobo Sibran Tata, Sato Robo Sibran Tata, Rebobo San Gariboka, Ebo Soto Dabo Sibran Tata, Rato Niki Basota, Emakoba Sandara. Let there be an open heaven for you, for your family for your business, for your enterprise, in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. Our Lord and Master Jesus, we bless you for your many-sided graces, love is upon us, your favor that has found us, and helping us, O oh God, key in into this pattern, this covenant time of convocation. We pray, my God, that grant us an open heaven. Let our heavens be open. Speak to us, touch us, deliver us, heal us, change us, give us insight and concept, ideas that can transform our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be angelic ministrations amidst us tonight. We vow to give you the praise. All glory, all honor be to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. So, as many who had your quiet time today from the Pascari's devotional, it is um, repairing the altar for my world creation and transfer, repairing the altar. And so, this. Um, Convocation as it's been dubbed, repair the altar of the Lord, or Rafa Mizbiak. And so um, we are journeying in the same trajectory. Um, tomorrow is going to be an awesome um, prophetic deliverance time uh, because we're going to delve deeper into the subject of altars and bring out some nitty gritty. Sometimes when you are eating, you realize that. You know, some meat you have to chew it over and over again. Hallelujah. So get deeper and then uh, uh, it's going to be awesome here. Don't miss it on Saturday morning as well from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. If Christ doesn't show up. Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome. And Sunday, God willing, uh, we will end the whole fast with the uh, Holy Communion and we'll bring our special seed of faith before the Lord. Your seed of faith is very important. The last time I checked, I realized that our whole life is a cycle of harvesting and sowing. Whether you know it or not, it's harvest. It's a lifestyle. It's a cycle. A cycle. That cycle based on Genesis 8.22. That as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never pass away. So knowingly or unknowingly, you are harvesting and you are sowing. And so you must be conscientious. You must, you must get to know some of these things 
so that you will watch what you do. And if the scripture says, those who sow sparingly, they reap sparingly. And those who sow, you know, enough, they reap uh, uh, plenty, they reap a lot of harvest. You've got to watch what you sow as in your deeds. Every seed is a deed. Every deed is a seed. Amen. Be reminded of Galatians 6, 7 as well. I believe that this preamble is necessary for where we are going. And so key in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So as you are seated here, you are harvesting something. Knowingly or unknowingly, you are also sowing something. So may the Lord God help all of us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we here? So our course scripture has been um, First Kings chapter number 18 from verse number 1 to the, about the 39th verse. 39 verse. And so we have seen that uh, is a story about when um, Ahab under his, his jurisdiction there was a famine three and a half years and uh, because Elijah the prophet has spoken that there was not going to be rain because Ahab had deserted the altars of the Lord and had made the people shuttle between two opinions and they don't know where to go. They are too spirited. They're so close. And for that matter, you know, God also withheld the rains from coming. They live in an agrarian setting. And an agrarian setting in those days, even though they had pockets of irrigational methods, they depended mostly on the rain. So if the rains are withheld, then it means that there will be no harvest. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And then a lot of things happened. And when it did, the Lord at the point told Elijah, go show yourself unto Ahab because I'm going to bring rain. That means based on if he will accept the condition conditionalities you will put down. And so Elijah goes and says that, this issue must be settled on Mount Carmel. The controversy must be settled on Mount Carmel. And so they had to all go there. Baal priests take their bullock. They sacrifice it. They did not mind repairing the altar of the Lord made up of 12 stones representing the tribe of Israel. Those of you who had your devotional, we read that, you know, the 12 stones is not only for uh, what you call God to answer by fire, but for God also be involved in your business, in your academic life, and all endeavor of yours. Say, Lord Jesus, be involved in my life. I give you the right of way. Pray for a minute on that. Pray for a minute on that. Just pray for a minute. Yeah, brother, you just, just pray for a minute. Sister, pray. Yes, wherever you find yourself, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Many a time, for oh, you know, God stands at the door as in Revelation 3, 20. He stands at the door and knocks. <laughs> but we don't open. That's why we needed to pray. May he have the right of way to be able to be involved in your life. Hallelujah. You choose. And so we see that Elijah goes on there. The bad priests call on their gods and their gods never respond. But we realize that when Elijah goes there, he calls the people to himself. And when the people came, he repaired the altar of the Lord in their eyes. That you cannot go past obedience and go and sacrifice. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter number um, 15 verse 22 that to obey is better than sacrifice and so Elijah did what was needful and as it is today many of us are going about sacrificing and leaving things that God has asked us to do we leave them undone and we think that God will descend but when Elijah had done everything he poured water three times around the trench and in the trench just to let the people know that when you have done it all, God can't help but descend into your situation. Even if it's a challenging situation, yet though you walk through the valley of the shadow, he will see you through. Even if you have been put in the lion's den, he will not let you become a delicacy for the lions. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when they have formed their weapons, it will not prosper. 
Maybe you saw the formation and the fabrication. But God says it will not prosper. Tell your neighbor it will not prosper. Hallelujah. And so tonight, as we, this, this service has been slated, uh, set apart for our, our world creation, for our works, our enterprises, our academic life, anything that you do, whether you are selling on a top, tabletop or you are flying a jet, whatsoever you are doing, God is saying, I want to be involved in it and I want to give you clues, mysteries of the kingdom, keys of the kingdom by which you can be able to become better, thrive and be God's highest and best. Amen. Amen. So we, I have subtitled it, no altar, no living covenant. No altar, no living covenant. Amen. Permit me to read some few scriptures to us and then we will set selling. And so, as I've paraphrased and uh, narrated our key scripture to us, we want to read from we want to read from Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 18. And then uh, we would also read from Psalm 74 and verse number 20 and 21. Psalm 74 from verse number 20 and 21. Let's hear the word of the Lord. But thou shalt remember, Zachar, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now there is a comma that says that, that he may establish the intent of the world is this if purpose is not known abuse is inevitable the why not only the how the why he says that that he may establish his covenant he may establish his covenant so reason for wealth is that god has an intent of establishing his covenant God has an intent of establishing his covenant, which he swore, which he swore, or swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Amen. He swore unto the fathers, but the swearing is relevant for this day. <laughs> May the Lord God help us. Are we here? All right, permit me to read from Psalm number 70, 74 and verse number 20. I don't know whether you have the, um, the Passion Translation, but you let me read from the King James. You can set your diaries if you have it. If not, we will do it. So he says that, have respect unto the covenant have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty so now there is a reason again for someone who is being addressed in this case god in prayer to have respect on the covenant. The reason being that. That the dark places of the earth. Our earth. Are full of the habitation. Of cruelty. Okay. It's going to be good in here. So let me pick it from the TPT. As in the. The passion translation 
Okay, let me do the verse 21 of this, then I will go there. 21, 21 of same. It says, Oh, let not the oppressed return a shame. Oh, let not the oppressed return a shame. Let the poor and needy praise thy name. And I believe this scripture is very relevant for tonight's service. Hallelujah. Somebody by the end of the message, you will praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say, I am the Lord. Okay. So now I want to read from the Passion Translation. It says that, remember your promises to us. There is no covenant without promises. Covenant encapsulates promises. So he says that remember your promises to us. For for the for darkness covers the land. True or false? Oh, which land are you in? Darkness covers the land, giving the violent ones. A hiding place. Giving the violent one a hiding place. Verse number 21 it says, Don't let these insults continue. Don't let these insults continue. Don't let them. I left it in my notes. You could just find it and throw it out there. Hallelujah. I said, Don't let these insults continue. Can't you see that we are your downtrodden and oppressed people? Make the poor and needy into a choir of praise to you. Amen. By the end of the service, we all join the choir. <laughs> because of what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Amen. I realize that the NLT2 was very interesting in the presentation of this text. It says, remember your covenant promises. He puts the two together. Remember your covenant promises. For the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be humiliated again. Don't let. Instead, let the poor and needy Praise your name. Amen. What a word. Hallelujah. What a word. No altar, no living covenant. And for tonight, we are believing God that God will help us come into the place where we will be committing to the altar and covenant of Carmel. When we say this, in we are saying that Every covenant that God has with us as individuals, yours might not be called camel. But we all figuratively have our camel, a place where God meets with us. Things that God has told us in terms of his promises slated unto us, unto our fathers, and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. And so on. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we realize that through our scripture, God has intimated and shared fellowship with his people through all this. Through our scripture. Through our scripture. If you wanted to speak to Moses in, in Exodus 3, there must be an altar of a burning bush. Something must burn somewhere. If God wants to meet them on Sinai, you know, some fire must come down somewhere. If it is an altar in the temple that you are supposed to build, he says that, ah, there must be fire burning on the altar. So David saw that and said, thou who keeps my lamp burning. Hello? In Leviticus chapter number 6 and verse number 12 and 13, he told the people that, listen, you must find a way of servicing the menorah, the, uh, the lamps in the place. The fire there must not go out. Whatsoever the priest will do, let them do it so that the fire will keep burning. And anytime the fire kept burning, God spoke. Solomon finishes dedicating the temple and the fiery presence of the Lord comes down and God speaks. Moses dedicates temple, fire comes down 
and God speaks. Sons of Aaron who, you know, are renegade and then they are backsliders and they are, they are orangus and they are disloyal. They pick their own fire in, as it were, a pseudo fire to go and create some kind of aura, another presence. But when they brought it before the presence where God's presence and altar was, God's altar and his fire consumed them. I just said that it kept on and on all the way on to, you know, um, um, the beginning of the betting of the church, the first church. So much that God calls us living altars, mobile altars. He said that we should present our bodies holy and acceptable as a living sacrifice unto him. And for God to accept the fact that and affirm the fact that we are living waters, the Bible says in clothing fire, like tongues came upon their head. Oh my God, so it means you are a walking candle. You are a walking menorah. Oh come on, somebody didn't hear that. The fire, I thought it would come on their desk. I thought it would come on their ceiling. But it came on their head, signifying that you are a mobile altar. Tell five people you are a mobile altar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. So I can emphasize say that some of us, when we are going, the devil can see whether the fire is burning or is out. The way the devil attacks you is that he sees whether your fire is burning or is out. So if you are coming to church just playing religion, but you are not servicing the altar of the Lord, your fire will be out. Now the deal with God is that the first fire that came in the temple and that lit the menorahs the and then lit the altar fire, and God brought the fire first. He brought the fire when they dedicated the temple. But he says the maintenance of the fire is up to you. It's up to you. Tell four people it's up to you. You choose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 16 says that therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that is an altar. And so tonight we are believing God that God will come true for us that the broken altars of our business, our academic pursuit, our health life, may all of them be repaired. Because the last time we checked, we realized that and Elijah, when he went to Mount Carmel with the people, he did not just go ahead to sacrifice the whatever sacrifice that they were sacrificing, but he repaired the altar. And to repair us in the word, repair us in a hybrid word, means that bring pairs, scattered pairs together. Pair them, bring them together. I command the faculties of your bliss, blessing that have been scattered to the west, east, south, whatever. I command the wind of the Lord to blow them together. Come on, shout a better amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what the devil did in the days of Elijah and Ahab and Jezebel was this, that he, they sub Jezebel and Ahab, they subverted the people with words. As in Acts chapter 15, verse number 24. With words, they unsettled their soul. With words, he made them deep so close. With words, he made them saif. As in they had double opinions. They didn't know what to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah asked them, how long will thou settle between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be Baal, serve him. Hallelujah. And why are the enemy's intent of salvation, as I said the other day to us, is that he wants to separate. He wants to separate you from the place of your covenant, the place of your altar, the place of your power, the place of your preservation, the place of your providence. But the devil is a liar. There are some people who move around town. Whenever they realize that you receive covering and protection from this place or supply, they try to destroy that place. You know some people like that. They, they, they can do that. They will come in as if they love. And so Paul said in Romans 8, he said, and what shall separate me 
from the love of God. Is it peril? Is it what? Is it what? And we declare tonight in the name of Jesus, your business is about to thrive. Your academic life is about to take a higher ascendancy. No power will separate you from your God. You receive your momentum, your inspiration, and your drive for your business from God. God is the source and the author of all things. And how can you function when you are dissociated from him? The devil is a liar. Tell your neighbor the devil is a separator. He creates discord. He doesn't accept, divide and rule in his ministry. But he brings it, he uses it as a weapon. Somebody say no way. Say in the name of Jesus, I come to service the altar of the Lord. I come to make vibrant my, of my covenant with God. Therefore, you can separate me. You can separate me from my God. Lift your voice, students, mama, business person, professional. Lift your voice and pray. Tonight we are here to pray. Come on, God, give up before we get to the anointing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. La das kabaya dos ebreha, shebra dos arabaha, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 17 to 18, we realize that God speaks intimate with Noah, irrespective of whatever was happening in the world of the day. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible makes us to know that you know, whilst God spoke with him, he said that if because of the evil, I will cut my covenant with you. I will give you an assignment. As you do that assignment, that is my covenant with you. Your obedience in the assignment is equal to my covenant with you. Hallelujah. So he said that, look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that the breeze, everything on earth will die. Verse number 18. But with thee, I will establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark. Thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Hallelujah. So we realize that just Noah obeying infers a covenant with God. Hallelujah. Anytime you disobey, you break the covenant with God. Anytime you disobey, you break the covenant with God. God promises preservation to somebody. The person uh, uh, yields and, uh, and then, you know, surrenders to whatever, you know, direction that God is giving to him. And then God says that that is my covenant with you. There are other things I'm sure that we may have trivialized but it was God's covenant with us. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will help us in this wise, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Are we in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I've come to realize that all financial empowerment rides on the railroads of covenant. All financial empowerment. And that is what we glean from Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number 18. Now here, he said that wealth, everybody say wealth. Everybody say wealth. Say wealth. Now, so wealth could be uh, inferred as chalak and other words in, in the Hebraic uh, essence. But here, they did not use chalak as in terms of, you would think as, you know, some cash here and something like that. But they used an all encapsulating word, and that word is kale. Now, when you say kale, it, 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 it means a lot of things. It includes wealth, it includes cash, but it, it embodies a lot of things. Number one, it is a force. Somebody say a force. Tonight, as the anointing of the Lord comes over you, a supernatural force will come, my God, into your soul and push you forward. Hallelujah. Amen. So now it's like a force. It says, whether of men or means, whether of men or means, when we say means, it means that 
you know, several things coming together by which you can accomplish something. When several things come together, accoutrement, several things, we have ways and means to, you know, fulfilling some things. All right, so when we say means over here, it says means, it says man. So God could bring man in your life. He's talking about the force. So he says to you that it, remember that it is I who gives you power to make wealth. You are boasting of your phone contact, but God has some networking people that He wants to place in your life. You might not need all the 7,000 people on your phone contact. Just one person in 24 hours will make all the difference for you. Where are you? Where are you? One person will introduce you. I said, one person will open the door for you. I said, just one person. I pray that you will not just choose, that the Lord choose for you. Ah, you have chosen all the things of your life, but this is a supernatural force that will make a choice. Your steady partner, your prayer partner, your personal partner in marriage, whatever, your business partner, may the Lord bring that person, may the Lord bring that person who will not come and compete with you, who will not come and be, be, be envious of you, who will not come and be jealous of you, but somebody who wishes you, where are you? Oh, all this while, you've been struggling with the people who come into your network, you don't strive with the right people, but I pray from today, May the wealth of the choice of men and women come into your life. I declare it for you. Your staff will be loyal. Your employees will be loyal. The people around you or in your department, wherever, lift up your voice and come before the Lord. And I cover your prayer right now. Lord, I need this force. I need this wealth that produces men. Let them come to me. Let it come. In Jesus' name. Amen. I spoke to an HOD of, uh, is it the HOD? Head of department, yeah? Uh, of a uni. And uh, the law was, I was ministering to him and then I was sharing some things. He said, Asafo, in fact, all the people in my mind, they are no good crowd. I said, eh. Is it that you, you yourself, you are not good? Oh, they. <laughs> and so he started saying, some of the times, there are people when you are put up there and you are so, they will make sure you don't function. They will make sure you don't get the right appraiser. They will make sure even some of the times, they go and then they gossip behind you but mount you and somebody you are watching you are saying the pastor you are dialing my number yes there is a wealth that goes beyond cash when you get that one cash too will follow you somebody say can you do? <laughs> the devil is a liar hallelujah we come in the volumes of the books for it is written that we will do the will of god i am the one Hallelujah. So whether of men or means, all other resources, there are other resources that you need that money cannot buy. Other resources, one is special favor. Likeability and acceptability. They see your forehead, no, they open the door. They see you know all of this are standing. They say you come. Yes, yes, come. Whether people are chuckling uh, or, or pouting their mouth or whatever, the, the person has opened the door for you. When they try to go in with you, say you can't go. This one can go alone. May it be for you. Clap for God. Clap for God for that. Clap for Jehovah. Clap for God. When we talk about that, he says, I am the one who gives you power. To make world, that world also signifies not just mere men and army. Some of you, you are here, you don't know the battle that is going on in your village, in your family, in other places. You are seated here, you are about to receive the anointing, say I'm here. But there are other people who are saying that prayer belongs to me. 
And what's your name? What's your name? John belongs. To, what's your name? What's your name? You belong. And then they are ready to put their life down for you. You might not have paid them, but they form a formidable army in the board meeting. When they are saying, no, you should not be promoted, the people will rise up. They say that if you don't promote, I'm working out. I pray this invincible army for somebody under the sound of my voice. I'm telling you, we live in a hostile environment. If we don't cast it into the pain anointing of the Lord, we might miss some things. Time is not on your side. You don't have forever. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have forever. You need this invincible army. Once upon a time, somebody came in my mind. You remember it came and the guy came all night. The space was swollen. Um, and he said he went to fight the people because they said they were coming to me. I didn't know anything. I have not paid anybody. So whilst they were, they are they are mobs and they are gangs and whatever. He stood and they fought. Hello? May others take the bullet for you. Oh, your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. Your amen is weak. White House security men and women, one of the pledges they make when a new president is sworn is that, Mr. President, I will take bullet for you. Uh, when our Papa Trump came, somebody said, I won't take bullet for you. And nobody was able to shoot him. But listen, I'm just telling you that may the Lord raise an army for you. Army in the market when you are asleep. May the Lord raise an army for you. A band of men. May they gather for yourself in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I am the one. Say, Lord Jesus, favor me with such an army. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Come on and pray. Come on, pray right now. Oh my God, do you love your life? Come on now. Pray right now. Sister, pray, brother, pray. Hallelujah. When I saw this, I was so happy. I said, some of the people, they might not even know you. They might not know you. But, ah, they just, they just, they just saw your, your, your first name and say, ah, I just like Dorothy. Uh, uh, well, well, I don't know whether she's black, tall, short, or obolo, or pimpon, or whatever. Hey, what I say? But the person says, no, you must approve this contract. Hey, uh, have you gone for some? No, 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 you must approve this contract. Sign this thing and take it off. Take it off my desk and then the boss will be on you just because of this wealth. Uh, it is the Lord who gives you, not your mother, not your father. I will lift up my eyes to the hills and wipe up at my help. My, my help comes from the Lord who never sleeps, nor slumbers. I declare it for you. When you get this wealth, true wealth as in cash, valor, strength, and then other things shall also follow you. Hallelujah. Goods, riches, strength, and so on. Health, affluence, and so on. Prosperity, luxurious stuff will all come. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. Hallelujah. Wealth is God's, I've been defined. Wealth is God's resources for your assignment. On earth or in time. On earth. And he says that I give it to you for the establishment of my kingdom. God wants to establish you. Because you have been receiving a lot of blows that has made you be bent over. The Bible says that a woman was in the chair that was bent over for 18 years. But in this he says that, come, I will establish you. There is somebody here for several years you haven't seen establishment. All that comes is on and off blessing. But in this season, as we are about to finish the year, as we are about to finish the year, God is about to establish you. You will take root beneath and bear fruit above. Where are you? At my God. God is about to bring establishment unto you. 
And in that essence, he says, you will arise. Say, I will arise. Say, I will rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will abide. You will accomplish. Hallelujah. Amen. You, things will be clear. You will have confirmation. You will be confirmed as well. Hallelujah. You will continue. What they said, you will stop midway. You will, my God, God will give you the answer to finish. Whatsoever your hands have been got Zachariah for, you shall finish it. Don't follow that scripture. You get confirmed. You, my God, I declare God's goodness over you. Hallelujah. Amen. In your establishment, God will help you. Help to lift up. He will lift you up. He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. Hallelujah. Whilst others think that ah, they have to scrape you off, off of the map, you will remain. You will have the staying power. I prophesy to you. Hallelujah. Amen. What is hanging out there? You don't know whether it's going to be. You will be set up. Set up as in set up properly. You, my God, things will be put in its right position in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will also succeed in this essence. But God is calling for covenant. Everybody say covenant. Everybody say covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. So I've said that a covenant is a deal set by God. Based on well well defined terms, sealed by an oath, sealed by an oath. So God, by His power, has a way of dealing with you. And so He said that for the establishment of His covenant, here yeah, they use the word berate from bara. I mean, when you talk about bara, it means that to purify, to make clear, Hallelujah, to patch something, to put it, you know, in the proper way as it is. But here He says that in the sense of cutting. In the sense of cotton, as in a compact, a compact, a man, a confederacy, a league, and so on and so forth. God is calling us to a place where He will honor Himself. He is a covenant keeping God. Say, My God is a covenant keeping God. Say, My God is a covenant keeping God. I said, My God is a covenant keeping God. And there is no one like him. Hallelujah. So Psalm 105 verse number 8. He says that he had remembered his covenant. Forever. Forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. May the Lord remember his covenant. I said may the Lord remember his covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. We need the Lord to remember his covenant. Because when altars are not in place, covenants are dormant. When altars are not in place, covenants become dormant. Amen. And so now we are looking at as we repair altars, covenants must be revived. Covenants must be stirred up. They must be proactive. Covenants must be agile. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so if life is all about covenant and altars. Then listen. When the foundation is destroyed. Psalm 11 verse 3. What can the righteous do? When the, when, my God, when the foundation is destroyed. What can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Israel had a foundation. Of a wonderful marriage with the Lord. And the marriage festivities happened. On Mount Carmel. That was where the resort they chose for their wedding. God being the groom. And then Israel being the bride. And so they met there. And as they met there. Whatever God said. According to Exodus chapter number 24 verse 3. He said we will do. Whatever God says we will do. Last week come and we are officiating wedding. Would you have this man to be your husband to have and to hold? Until death do us, he said, Yes, I will. In the same way, and Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgment. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we do, we will. So that was a wedding response 
for their covenant with the Lord. The Bible says our maker is our husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Isaiah chapter number 54 and verse number 5. And so for that matter, the wedding was supposed to be adhered to. Amen. But the people, the bride went on whoredom. The bride went for Berlin. That was why God sometimes in scripture calls Israel prostitute. When they go apostate and go after the Moabites God and so on and so forth. God says that, hey, you have gone on hold up. I hate this one. I am a jealous God. Like any jealous man. And my jealousy, I visit generation unto generation unto generation. So please don't, don't incur my jealousy. My jealousy, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Don't cross my path. I'm a jealous husband. Hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking for God. <laughs> Of course, jealousy makes you protect. Anything you are not jealous about, you will never protect. You will never protect. Hallelujah. That is why he said in Exodus 34, 14, don't show that, you know, my name is jealous. Tell your neighbor, God is a jealous God. Now, before God can have any dealings with man to bless and promote him, and, and, and before he can even begin to stand by a man and then throw his way whilst he's praying you know, for people for healing and other things to take place. There must be a covenant. There must have been an altar that that person always services that makes God's covenant sure and not dormant. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So this is how God moves. There must be a consensual agreement or league or pact as in covenant. So we look at the Noah covenant, we realize that even in Genesis chapter number 9, God, verse number 8, down, God still showed him a rainbow and said that this is my bow. It is a sign of my covenant. May the Lord stir up his covenant with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so then we have realized that all tests make covenants agile. Altars activate covenant. When you service the altar, the covenant works. Even though God comes and cuts a pact with you, he, cuts, he has a covenant, a confidence with you. Whilst God has that league with you, he expects that you will come through your prayer, through your devotion, putting oil in that lamp so that the fire will continue. As much as that fire bears, the covenant stays. Is somebody here? But with the Israelites, they had deserted the altar, the altar of Mount Carmel, and the altar stones were scattered. So it means nobody visit there. I'm telling you, this doesn't happen in the fetish right? The fetish place, you will always find a successor. They will come to your house and tell you, Mommy, one of your children must come and serve. And by fear and all those things, people give you, they always have but when it comes to the truth where we have to service the altar of the Lord we leave it on service we leave it on service you pray as and when you like you praise as and when you like you give as and when you like somebody shout mercy me hallelujah and so looking at this we want to still you know, go deeper. Yesterday I told you about the altar as an elevated place. An altar is also a place of sacrifice. A place of contact with the spirit world. It is also a place of invocation and covenant activation. So when you service the altar, covenants are activated. When you service your altar, covenants are activated. The altar serves to activate covenants. It serves its existing covenant. And so then that's why I said no altar, no living covenant. A covenant is rendered useless and dormant in the absence or in the absence of an altar of prayer. A covenant, a covenant, a covenant is rendered useless or dormant in the absence of an altar of prayer. Covenant remains dormant without an altar 
of prayer. And I pray that God will help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. May we attend to our vineyard. May we attend to our, 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 our altars. Hallelujah. Some of us, our family altars are scattered. The father is here. We don't pray. Uh, mother is here. That nobody prays. Children don't pray. Anybody gets up. They eat. They sleep. They go to work. They come. They go to school. They bath. They sleep. They watch TV. They, they play with phones and your phone. And they sleep. No altar. There is no family altar. Listen, you are digging your own grave. As you enjoy being lazy and not going to service the altar, you are digging a grave. May the Lord God help us. I said, may the Lord God help us. Hallelujah. Some of us, our covenantal, you know, altars and then whatever, they are kaput. They are undormant. And the Bible says in, in, in Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 1, from the AMPC, I'm going to say that to the angel of the church or the messenger of the church of Sardis, right? These the words of him who has the seven spirits of the Lord. He says, I know your deeds. You have a name or a reputation that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. You have a everybody sees that you are a Christian, your Bible is big. Going up with the, 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 the those Christians, they had a particular bag bush they have to keep. When you see that bag bush, you know where the person is coming from. Do you have one still? No, today, anything can go and you'll still be anointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. At those days, you will see, when you see a Christian, like, you know this is a Christian. The haircut will tell you. Hallelujah. Are we here? Amen. Amen. So, but you know, we, we, we shouldn't have a reputation as if that, as it were, uh, we, we are wearing some kind of candle. Everybody knows you are powerful, but demons see that there is no fire on your head. There was a visible fire in the upper room when the 120 were gathered. When the Holy Ghost came, there was fire. And I believe that fire still burns on a believer any true believer hallelujah amen, amen. amen. say lord jesus lord keep my fire burning amen. say lord jesus keep my lamp burning amen. lift your voice and pray for a minute pray for a minute come on now you can do better in jesus name amen, amen. so that the question becomes this uh, 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 and the statement becomes uh, we must have a functional and operative altars in our families we must it's a must you are a student don't just uh, don't just believe in what you have just learned academically you are first a spirit you have a soul and you live in a body so if soul is wise you have studied some things in the lecture room let your spirit man connect to the altars of God so that you will receive divine guidance the Holy Ghost will bring you to memory whatever you have learned when you go sit in the examination there are several things that happen after you have learned you might be the sharp or the sharp person then but listen without the help of God you will labor in vain I said without the help of God you will labor in vain we must have functional and operative altars in our families, in our workplace, in churches where we offer our sacrifice. And yesterday I talked about the four L's. The four L's is the kind of sacrifice we bring before the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of our lips. We bring the sacrifice of our life. We bring the sacrifice of our love. We bring the sacrifice of our livelihood. So whether it's in giving, whether it's in singing, it falls within these four L's. What is the first L? The sacrifice of our lips. The second, the sacrifice of... Third, the sacrifice of... Fourth, the sacrifice of... Don't, never forget it. Never forget it. So in all as some of us we are stuck tightly, we don't give up friends, we don't say no all that you are you are following the government, you are following this economy, you are following whatever. But listen, God overrides all of them. 
That is why David had to say, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Whence come in my help? When you look at the hill, the hill is the economy. That's why I said, lift up your eyes above the horizon of your problem. And you will see how God will come through for you. Tell your neighbor, pastor is speaking to you. Hallelujah. So, we offer our sacrifice of our praise, our incense of our prayer, in our bid to activating and servicing the altars with God. Altars empowers covenant. Without true altars, so our daily coming for fellowship and other things, or as we do that God is blessed because it comes with pockets of obedience. Little, little fragments of obedience that comes and then the gigsaw puzzle comes together and it forms the covenant of the Lord. Wow. Altars empowers covenant. This is the This is the implication of the of a redemic, regular, consist, uh, consistent prayer as God says. So as we do it, it's not it's not a whole one-stop shop thing. You do it. Today I've prayed. Oh, in fact, I did a 20 24-hour prayer. And so you are finished for the whole year. Like somebody who calculated all the money that he then said that from January, I said I finished paying my time. So all other things that happens comes under the rod will not happen. So God says this in Luke 18. He says that men ought to pray and not faint. Men always ought to pray and not faint. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 17 also says that from the AMPC he said be unceasing in prayer. Praying perseveringly. So you, you have to keep on telling never keep on praying. Jesus had that habit early in the morning. He would go to a place where you're looking for him. They can't find him. And then he's praying. Let us, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, don't be directed by your phone. You bought it. Direct your phone. Did you hear what I said? I said, don't be directed by your phone. So where your phone directs you, that's where you go. That's where you go. And why would the Holy Ghost also direct you? So he said, oh, why didn't you pray? When I got up, I had a text. And the text took me to Kotobabi. And when I went there, I went to Abosokan. And when I went to Abosokan. And I've now come. I'm tired of her. Her. Do you have any food? And you eat. By the time you realize, you are belging to sleep. Lord, help us. Amen. Hallelujah. In the absence of meaningful daily devotion, prayer, praise, sacrifice, the four L's, your altar becomes dead. Your covenant remains dormant and God's help is denied in drought and blood. And this is what happened to Ahab and the people. They deserted the place and so there was no rain. There was no resources. There was no money. Even their animals were risking dying. That was why he said over there that they should go and look for fun to come and feed the animals. Some of us are experiencing some drought in our lives. But as we come before the Lord, may we service our altars. May our covenant with the Lord become hyperactive. Hallelujah. Because he's a covenant keeping God. And so the deal becomes this. God has to be made mindful of his covenant. And this is where, you know, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 26 in the AMPC says that, Put in me in remembrance. Remind me of, my, of your merits. Put me in remembrance. Remind me of your merits. Let us plead and argue together. Set forth your case that you may be justified. Proved right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so in this inference we get, we draw Psalm 74 from it. And then the psalmist had to say, have a respect for your covenant. Have respect for your covenant. And so when you talk about this, why should a, a human being 
tell God, respect your covenant. It, is, it looks as if you think about it in a little, it's as if that is the person trying to insult God. It was the Asaphite who wrote this. He said, I have respect. The, the word respect they, they did is not as in honoring. The word respect there is Nabat. And when you say Nabat, it, it doesn't mean honor as per se. It means that uh, uh, what you call scan. They use the word scan. Scan. Scan it. Consider it for an immediate approval. So now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm now, I'm now in Psalm 74, verse 20. It, so when it says Nabat, and those of you are right, it's N A N A B A T. It means can. It means consider. It means see, look at it as it were somebody who is perusing a, ma a material or a script that is said, so that the person will sign it. Are you understand? Say so now. God says that concerning the works of my hand, remind me, remember, uh, uh, remind me of it. God loves that we come before Him and we rehearse His words back to Him. That is why a Christian who doesn't love the word of God, when you come before the Lord, you will come empty. There will be no vice in your prayer. The Bible says in Hosea 14, too, it says, take ye words and come to the king. You should know the scripture about healing. You should know the scripture about how God wants you to live in a righteous way as a single and prep yourself before marriage. You should understand the God's dictates concerning business. You should get into even Nehemiah chapter 10 and Nehemiah chapter 13 and know that Nehemiah said, we will not forsake the Lord's house. We will not turn our back on the Lord's house. We will bring our tithes. We will bring our offering. We will bring our first fruits unto the Lord. You should know all these things. Are you understand what I'm saying? He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. If I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and then if you bring the tithe unto me, the whole tithe, and see if I prove me if I will not. So you should know the words. When you know the words, you remind the Lord about the words. Prayer is rehearsing his words back to him. God wants to hear his words again. Tell three people God wants to hear his words. Number one, are you tired? All right. So, so he said, have respect unto the covenant. And so now, here, that's where we are going to pray. It becomes like somebody who is passionate. That's why I wanted to read the, the Passion Translation. Somebody who is passionate and then it, 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 it has some holy zeal and is coming to your... You see, if the person is your true mother and your father, you can talk and your mother will know that, no, this is not that my son wanted to um, disrespect me, but it's because of the openness. We are all talking. Are you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Aha. Uh -huh. So, so you, you when it happens, so it's like this, and we call it a holy grasp, a grap, grappling. You like Jacob holding on to the angel of the Lord who came and said, If you don't change my name, I'm not going to let go of you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us let and bring the word of say, Have respect unto the covenant. The reason is that the economy is bad. The reason is this. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty. Full of the habitation of cruelty. People are cutting corners. People are selling their children. People, some of you, you are working them and maybe they have sold you. Or once you are going, you think that you are shaking, shaking, shaking. Where do you they are negotiating on your head. He said, wait, 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 no, no, no. That person said, no. Yesterday he was not wearing a new wig. Now he has changed the wig. So add 40 Ghana. <laughs> you have no idea what the enemy is doing. And you must not say same. Are you waiting for another president to come or what? No, your God is on the throne. Say, my God is on the throne. It is he who gives you power to make wealth. Who is see that says a thing and it comes to pass when God commands it not? When God says it, it comes to pass. I believe in the words of the Lord. His promises, they are yea and amen. He is not a man to lie. Not the son of man to change his mind. 
So stop attending the pity parties and rise up and say, Lord Jesus, I have heard the word. Have the respect unto the covenant. I can sense that there is a healing in me that must be actualized. I can sense that there is a breakthrough in me that must come to pass. I don't know how to get the capital. I don't know who will connect me, but I know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask for. I don't know how, I don't know when the dollar rate will be normalized, but I know that you are able to do it. Lord, empower me. It is you who gives us power. Give me power. Give me, my God, give me power to make wealth. Let you be my portion. I might not know how, you might not have, not have the capital. A capital that somebody will say, I have this 40 footer container of goods. Take this one and go and say, No, 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 no deposit. All that I want is character, truth, and integrity. Oh, I thought you begin to bask in prayer and tell the Lord some things because, because we must remind God of some things. We must move heaven to touch our earth. This is our time. This is our time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if the truth is this, that if all sources are products of obeying God, then obeying God and his laws, then we must go all out and push the button. Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua 1 8 makes us to know that sources then becomes a choice. If you will hearken unto this word, if you will obey the word, it says that uh, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. So if you meditate upon it, you will become. You will become. Hallelujah. Amen. Just don't do it because you want a one-time breakthrough and then you forget about God. Oh, pastor, we are with you in spirit. God wants rhythm. Listen, can I tell you something? Yesterday I said it in person. Whatsoever we do consistently in a particular place, brings either a good presence or a bad presence in the place. So now if you, you have a piece of land. Maybe it's, it's about 10 acres and you decide to bury people on it. And now you have buried about 25 people on it. Very soon, your joy of building your duplex in that place will go. Because you don't want to go and have neighbors who are dead. Hello? In the same way, when we decide to meet, whenever we gather here, we'll pray. We'll sing four songs and we'll pray. We'll sing four songs and we'll pray. By the time you realize, even when you are not there, and somebody goes there, the person sends the presence of God. There are places people don't want to pass because they have killed people around that area before. There are houses people cannot live in because the place has become haunted. Nobody is in it, but because of the activity, we are spirit. So whatsoever you do continuously, rhythmically in a place, it brings a presence. But in the season, may that presence be an agile altar, a positive, a working altar, a proactive altar. And my God, I pray, may the heavens be open unto us. In the season, by the truth of the word of God, you can help us become God's success model so that all others will see and emulate. Say, I am the word. For that matter, you must understand that if it is success, success, it's evolving, evolving, moving from one point to another, adding to your life, augmenting, hallelujah, an augmentation, even to your faith, add. God wants us to thrive. God wants us to advance and do whatever. So if it is sources, then you need the keys, and God is giving you the keys. Say, I receive the keys of the kingdom. These are great keys by which you open doors. And then again, you get in there and you realize that if it is success, then success is not merely a destination. Okay? You need, you need what we call a map, a strategy. Success is not a merely a destination. You need a map. You need a strategy. You need direction. Say, I need direction. 
say, I, re- I need direction. Hallelujah. So God came through Jesus and he says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. So success is more directional than destination. You need a strategy. You need a means. You need process. You need procedures. Hallelujah. Amen. To be able to get in there. And as in Matthew chapter number uh, 16 verse number 19, I pray that God will open the eyes of our understanding. God will help us according to Ecclesiastes 10.10 10, that you know our acts will be sharpened. We will be sharp. Hallelujah. When the iron is blunt, more strength is needed. Hallelujah. But wisdom is profitable to direct and i pray this for you receive wisdom students receive wisdom business people some of you are scheduled to travel receive wisdom as to what to do in the name of jesus christ any god that is sharp i pray that your hearts will be sharpened it will not be dull the iron will not be dull in the name of jesus christ and as we do this Deuteronomy chapter number 28 verse number 12 becomes your portion. Say the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. Say Lord Jesus, open your good treasures unto me. He said the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the works of thy hand. Lift your hands wherever you are. Say my hands are blessed with the blessing of the Lord. Say Lord Jesus, Bless the works of my hands. Establish the works of my hands. Let the beauty of the Lord be seen in my life. As I service my altar and I stir up the covenant, I pray that your blessing will be my portion. I change the trajectory of things. I change whatsoever is going down. And I pray that, Lord, my weeping will give way to dancing. My joy will come in the name of Jesus. I receive you. I receive strength. I receive breakthroughs. I receive open doors. I declare in the name of Jesus the rain and the, the rain that has stopped for a long time. It will come down again. I declare an open heavens over your life. You will lead to many nations. You shall not borrow. Where are you? I said you shall not borrow. I said you shall not borrow. In the name of Jesus, there is somebody here. The enemy is provoking you to go and sell your property. Some things are because of uh, some hard thing that you find yourself in. But I declare, may the Lord step in for you. But my God, may the Lord step in for you. I said, may the Lord step in for you. You will not be put to shame. Those who look up to the Lord, they are ready. Rise up wherever you are. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Come before the Lord. Tell the Lord, the Lord, I come to your covenant. I come to your covenant. I align with your covenant. I come to service the altar, the altar of my life. Anything you have said that I have not obeyed, I come in the power of obedience. Show up, Lord. Show up, Lord. I come in the power of obedience. All things that you have asked me to obey, according to your word in First Samuel, chapter number 15, verse 22, to obey is better than sacrifice. I come before you and I obey you. For you said, if I obey, oh my God, and I become willing, I will eat the good of the land irrespective of how austere the system is, I will still eat the good of the land. Can you lift up your hands wherever you are? You yourself, you are a mobile altar and there are altars you must service. Some of the altars have gone dormant. Some of your altars are not active. And like a camper, when your fire goes down, all the evil animals, they begin to come. The carnivores, they will come and attack you. But may your fire keep on burning. Amen. Some of us, we had the fire like the ten virgins, five were foolish, five were wise. Some of us, we had the fire, but we didn't take extra oil. Tonight, may extra oil come to you. Amen. Your amen is weak. Amen. I said, tonight, may extra oil come to you. Amen. Listen, God is not a man, so don't behave and don't 
relate to God as if he is your classmate. You should know, come, if God is going to bless you, you should know that God, in the midst of the blessing and in different seasons, I will still serve you. Don't go light off on God. But let us be consistent. Say, Lord Jesus, help me with the spirit of persistence, the spirit of perseverance, the spirit of consistency. Let me be consistent in doing what you want me to do as I service my altar with the fruit of my lips, with the sacrifice of my life, with the sacrifice of my love, with the sacrifice of my livelihood. Lord, help me to be able to keep my altar burning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, and lift your voice and pray. Pray right now. Lift your voice. Come before the Lord. Come on now. Friends and loved ones, wherever you are live streaming, God's power will be your portion. God's power will be your portion. Go on now. Go before the Lord. Come before the Lord. Pray. All night. The family altar is broken. The family prayer is broken. The business prayer is broken. Listen, people consult things. Some are consulting Marie. Some are consulting gods and goddesses. Some are consulting women. Who are you consulting? Let your voice come before the Lord. Lord, let my altar stand there and carry on. Listen, listen. When we say all these things, when we say all these things, and you adhere to them, it's like a man who you are going to sleep or whatever. You have your windows are shut, your doors are well shut. You are secure in the place. But you could be living in the house. You are, it's like you are just worshipping God but you are not adhering to his dictate. It's like you are sleeping but your doors are open. Your, your, your windows are open. Any bug, uh, you know, uh, uh, thief can come in there and steal. The enemy came to steal, to kill. Either they will bring sickness, they will bring some by the time you realize you are spending on what you don't have to spend. And there is somebody here, it paid you last week. Because so you had something by the time you realize you had to use it for something you didn't want to use. We have to come before the Lord and tell the Lord, the Lord, Lord, I am oh, help me to be obedient unto you. As you do it, listen, continue, even in tears. Those who sow in tears, they reap in joy. This afternoon, the Lord was ministering to me that he is going to speedily visit businesses in this house under the sound of my voice. You might not say amen, but I believe it for you by force. I know your business is in your portfolio and your handbag, but my God, God's visitation is coming over. Amen. Listen, because we are in a season that you can't beat the system with the system. You need the supernatural graces of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready for the visitation of the Lord? Say, Lord Jesus, help me to be consistent with prayer, with my giving, with all that you have asked me to do, with my fellowship. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to go all out, looking unto you alone and no one else. Come on, lift up your voice and come before me. Come on and come before them. Everywhere, what those of you in the foyer, in the other places, everybody be in prayer. Come on now, come before the Lord. Let us believe God for his presentation, his power. Shut the rock Hallelujah. Say obedience. Say obedience. Say Lord Jesus. I pray this prayer. Help me to be obedient. Help me to be obedient. And as I obey, 
Have respect to your covenant. Have respect to your covenant. Have respect to your covenant. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Come on now. Sister, pray. You, you are, what you are praying will transcend today and get into two years from now, five years from now, three years from now. Come on, pray, brother. I see, come on, lift your voice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let the good be destroyed. Let every satanic order be quiet. In the name of Jesus. 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 Covenant keeping God, there is no one. Come on now. I and open. Covenant keeping God. Our God is a covenant keeping God. Come on now. Sit 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you see, when we don't understand something, there is the tendency for us to malign or just uh, not give our best in that regard. Hallelujah. Amen. We talk about covenant. Somebody say covenant. Say contract. Say covenant. Say contract. Our God chooses to have a covenant with us and not contract. Because covenant are built on relationship and commitment and trust. But contracts are built on mistrust. They are legal binding. Contracts are legal binding and so on and so forth. But God wants a relationship with you. Tell three people God wants a relationship with you. Number one. Number two. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now in our world today, because we don't understand it, we frown on covenant, even the covenant of marriage. We don't, we take it to be a contract. So these days people can even say that, ah, I've come to marry you, but my ship is not part. I also have seven krekun there. They are not part. I came to marry with my body. When I go out, so, are you understand what I'm saying? So now we are most of the things that the world that is the you and cry in our world today. We could be in church and we say, Oh, can we have a business? But the time realize back when Chabaku. No buttons go tell them about going to say the whole other tada. We show good. So contrast, uh, yes, they are legal by whatever, but God wants a relationship. And based on that, he wants absolute commitment. He wants you to commit. Commit with your life. Commit with your love. Commit with your lips. Commit with your livelihood. This is it. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to relate with you more than ever before. Forgive me of all my wrongs for deserting the covenant. But today, accept me again. I surrender of my inconsistency. I pray that I will be energized by your Holy Spirit to fulfill my covenantal duties. So help me, God. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on. Come on up. 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 Come on now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many realize that the nation is in a lot of distress? I mean, listen, the people are receiving the same salary. They have not increased their salary. They are expanding the same, taking care of the same expenditure. And that they are supposed to survive. Hello? People have their money seated in the bank. They have not redrawn, but the money is reducing. Are we here? You yourself, the little combo that you have, going to buy things, you have to negotiate. Now you have become an expert negotiator. I'm taking you to Scotland's yard. So that when people have hostage situation, you will go and negotiate. Anything you negotiate, one to that, one to that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Huh. But we are praying. Listen, I, I, I saw a BBC um, a news um, from Afghanistan today. And then uh, some of the people, just about 16 hours ago, they are saying that uh, some of the parents are giving their children sedative to drink. Because when they are hungry, they have no food for them. So they go to the drugstore rather 
and buy a small pill and then they give you so by the time that the children are sleeping without food oh i said bbc news and so they are they, they are sleeping from an endana wada I saw this and said, hey, what is this one? What is this one? Hungry children. I dragged my hungry children to help them sleep. Hello? Are we here? Said after since the Taliban took uh, whatever. Listen, we are praying. That is Afghanistan. The Ghana 2-1. We don't know what people are doing. Yeah. Schools cannot increase their school fees. Children are going to the same school. They feed your child with the same... You, you don't want them to increase. You you don't want them to increase. So, but what do you think will be the food they will give to your child? That is why when God said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, He says, I am the one who gives you power. To make wealth. He didn't say chalak, but he said keil. In other words, I give strength. It's a kind of force that will come that irrespective of the economy, I will let you survive. I'm preaching to somebody. Oh, come on now. My God. Hallelujah. We serve the God of Isaac, who was able to tell Isaac in Genesis 26, he said, Isaac, don't go to Egypt. He said to Isaac, so in the same land. And the Bible says in Genesis 26, 12, in the same year, Isaac saw the read a hundredfold. I prophesy it over your life. You will not go and steal. You will not go and take rights. You will not go and sleep with other people's husbands. But you will, my God, the letter that you do, you will be able to not only survive, you will bless other people. Lift your voice and come before the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, against all odds, I receive your power to make wealth. I receive to you. Say, I receive to you. Your invincible force your divine enablement let it be my portion in this hostile times in this uncertain times i ask for this enablement lift your voice and pray come on now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Sharaba. 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 Yata. Wobos. And one, shut it. Come on, Hallelujah. The devil knows that when you go to your camel, as just as Ahab and Jezebel make them to be subverted to move away from camel, they know that their beauty is in camel, your your prosperity is in camel. The majesty of God is in camel. Hallelujah. Your well-being is in camel. As a matter of fact, when you study the topography of camel, it's one of the most beautiful places. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. But you see, when the enemy means to do you mayhem, he will even let you see evil with the good. People who can help you, he will let you with your own hands move them away from you but somebody say no more somebody say no more say in the name of jesus i go back to my place of fruitfulness i go back to my place of beauty i go back to my place of well-being according to the word of the lord and whatsoever is originally written about my life Come on, begin to pray this prayer. Those of you that get your emblems ready as we come before the Lord. We come before the Lord. Pray right now. Lift your
your emblems, let's pray as we are praying here. I declare God's goodness over this for you. I declare God's power. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that as you anoint yourself, your children with the hand of the Lord come over you in the name of Jesus. I declare that all your blessings may it become the mystery for the contact of the Lord over your life in the name of Jesus. I end every satanic order in the name of Jesus and I declare and those emblems bless in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah you can take your seat wherever you are and just begin to talk to God how do you want the anointing to be for you some of you are students some of you are entrepreneurs some of you are doing whatever talk to God concerning whatever you are doing in the name of Jesus you need an upgrade, you need an uplift, you need God's career to show up. Begin to pray right now for yourself as I minister to our friends and loved ones over the hallelujah. So now I declare that this oil that you have, they are now a mystery point of contact of the Lord. They are blessed in the name of Jesus to anoint yourself wherever you are sick and anointed. We are believing God that yes new covenant will be revived in your life not only that the altars that are dormant god will revive it in the name of jesus christ again we remind you of tomorrow's anointing service as well don't miss it hallelujah we are in this for what god has slated for us in the month of december nobody knows what is in december but we come before the lord and we say that against all the odds we will thrive like isaac and we'll have a hundredfold return may the works of your hands be blessed may loans be paid may debts be paid may the lord come through for you in the financial hardship we pray in the name of the decay of grace, may it come over your life. In the name of Jesus, be reminded of your seed of faith. And of course, your offerings as well. You can do it by Momo and by our bank detail. God bless you so much. We are praying for you. We will share your testimony very soon. God bless. Hallelujah.